What's good, YouTube? Ryan Babs here, back with another video. In this video, uh, we're going to react to Elon Musk on buying Twitter and turning it into X as it is today. He was on the Joe Rogan podcast this last week, and um, I figured let's watch it. Elon Musk is one of the uh, probably one of the most influential CEOs today. So uh, let's go ahead and watch it. Let's see what he has to say about him buying Twitter. Here we go. The Joe Don't forget to experience. like, comment, um, subscribe, what has it been turn like the notification bell on, all that other stuff. Here we go. Oh, yeah. Do did you, did you ever wake up in the middle of the night and have a dream that you didn't do it? What is YouTube doing with this shitty video well, quality in the beginning of the video? Easier. Well, it's certainly um, a recipe for trouble, I suppose, or contention. Um, He's just blowing smoke in his face. that led you to make the decision to do it? I mean, this is going to sound uh, somewhat melodramatic, but I was worried about that it, that it was having a corrosive effect on civilization. Hmm. Uh, that it was uh, just having a bad a bad impact. Um, and um, I think part of it is that it's it's where it's where it was located, which is uh, you know downtown San Francisco. Um, and while I I think San Francisco is a beautiful city, and and we sh should really fight hard to um, kind of right the ship of San Francisco. If you've walked around downtown San Francisco, right near the X FK Twitter headquarters, it's a zombie apocalypse. I mean, it's rough. I've never I mean, been down there, so I can't there. I can't speak for that. No. I've heard it's crazy. I've heard it's crazy. I've heard you you really can't believe it until you actually go there. You can't believe it until you go there. So now you have to say, well, what philosophy led to that outcome? And that philosophy was being piped to Earth. What? So, um, you know, a philosophy that would be ordinarily quite niche and geographically constrained, so that that the sort of the fallout uh, area would be limited, um, was effectively given an information a weapon, um, a tech uh, inf information technology weapon to propagate uh, what is essentially a mind virus to the rest of Earth. Um, and the outcome of that mind virus is very clear if you walk around the streets of downtown San Francisco. It is the end of civilization. And it's not hmm. just uh, propagating the mind virus, but suppressing any... What is this so-called mind virus? Yes. Well, in order for the virus to propagate, it must suppress opposing both viewpoints. So. Because it doesn't stand up to scrutiny. Sip it on some whiskey. Correct. Yeah. I mean, you, you've, I mean you've, you, you, you've, you've felt the, the virus. You yeah. Know. Yeah, people have tried to cancel you so many times. Yeah, it's fascinating. Yeah, um, I don't think you're melodramatic at all. I I, I think it's a, uh, it's a, uh, I mean, I don't want to be melodramatic, but it's almost like a death cult. It's a death cult. No, it no, I, it, that is exactly right. Um, it it, uh, it it's essentially the uh, extinctionists. Like it's in the limit. It is that they're propagating uh, the extinction of humanity and civilization. In downtown San Francisco, and, and who are, are like most most of the time, it's, I'm trying it's to figure out what the they're hell they are talking about. But sometimes it's explicit. Like there was a guy on the front page of the New York Times uh, who it literally has the thing called the extinctionist movement, um, and he was quoted on the front page of the New York Times as saying, uh, "There are eight billion people on the world, but it would be better if there were none." That's fucked. And I'm like, "Well, buddy, you can start with yourself." Yeah. Mm. Um, Damn, Elon. Friends, that's what it was. Damn. <laughs> well, here he is. That guy. Uh, he looks Damn. Like he's not long for this earth. Yeah, he ain't gonna be here much longer. Voluntary young. human extinction movement. That's hilarious. Pe p spent. I'd like to party with that dude. <laughs> okay. I would just like to like. That's the know. that's 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 the death. That's the, that's an explicit version of the death cult. Yeah, maybe the extinction live long cult. and die out. It's. Like, I mean, it's it's not. Uh, the extinction is a word he uses. Yes. No, I mean, it's not a. It's literally a self description. Did that, they cover that him death glowingly? cult was in charge of s I in social, I social media. Yeah. And still largely is at uh, Google and Facebook, by the way. Yeah. So yeah. I'm like, uh, I'm not in favor of uh, human extinction. Uh, they are, and uh, they can go to hell. Well, that guy is. Yeah, he can go to hell. That guy seems silly. 
I, uh, I would like to hang out with him, though. I would like to find out what makes him tick. I bet that guy is fascinating. Get him on the show, well, Joe. Just you get him so alone for a few days. I mean, I, I, I'm in favor in. of. I mean, I'm pro environment, but the, 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 in the limit. I'd hope uh, so. You're you the CEO of Tesla. If you take environmentalism to an extreme, you start to view humanity as a plague on the surface of the earth, like a like a mold or something. Right. Um, and. But it's, it's, this is actually false. The, uh, the Earth could, could take probably 10 times the, the current civilization. The, po- the population could be, you could 10x the population without uh, destroying the rainforest. No, that's, so the, I think, I the, think the, that's the, the wrong. The environmental movement, and I'm an environmentalist, uh, has gone too far. I think that number is it's quite off. Unless you can build um, up. You know, if, if, you, if you start thinking that's that the only humans way. are bad, then the natural conclusion is humans uh, should die out. Now, I'm headed to an AI safety, international sort of AI safety conference uh, later tonight, leaving in about three hours. Um, and um, mm-hmm. I don't know, meet with the British Prime Minister, a number of other people. Um, so you have to say, like, how could AI go wrong? Well, if, if, if AI gets programmed by the extinctionists, oh, <laughs> well, its utility function will be the extinction of humanity. Mm. So I mean, there are times when, when when masks are warranted, but most of the time it's it's actually counterproductive. Well, what does this have to do with buying Twitter? Old Twitter was uh, the propaganda, and yeah, yeah, the adherence to whatever the CDC was saying, and the dismissing of legitimate scientists, guys like uh, Jay Bhattacharya from uh, yeah. Stanford and legit guys yes and they were suppressing them and even banning them they banned alex berenson i mean this is it was wild they banned alex for essentially reading peer-reviewed papers yeah no i i mean all all twitter was basically an arm of the government yeah so was that shocking Mm. like what was that like is that to me that was the most bizarre was the twitter files when you let shellenberger and matt taibbi and all those guys get in the Twitter and the, the response where Matt Taibbi gets audited I mean which is just wild I mean it's just so blatant and so in your face yeah it's weird no I I mean the re- yeah the, the degree to which and, and by, by the way Jack didn't really know know this but the degree to which Twitter was simply um, an arm of the government was not uh, well understood by the public and uh, it, it was there was no it was whatever the official government. I mean, That's was like an interesting up, take. Um, you know, it's a state publication is the way to think of old Twitter. It's a state publication. And was the justification from their perspective that they are progressive liberals, they have the right intentions, it's important that they stay in power, the progressive liberals stay in government and power, because this is the this is their... There, there was, there was uh, basically oppression of... Um, any any views that would even I would say be considered middle of the road, um, but certainly anything on the the right. I'm not talking about like like far right. I'm just talking mildly right. The people like Republicans were suppressed at ten times the rate of Democrats. Um, now that's because mm. uh, old Twitter was fundamentally controlled by the far left. It was like completely controlled by the. the, the I far knew left. this would get political. And, Th- that's why I say, like, you know, the, like San Francisco Berkeley is a niche ideology. Uh, it's hard to. And say I don't really get political. I don't know that much about politics, so I don't really speak on Maybe it. Maybe Portland. Maybe Portland, but it's like it's a right con- there. It's yeah, it's like it's Coldwell. those two places are the the most far left places uh, in America. Yes. Um, I can so see that. Uh, from their standpoint, everything is to the right, <laughs> including <laughs> moderates. Right. Right. So that now. If if if, but if if you internalize a far left position, uh, everything seems wrong to you that if that is not far left, right. And so they naturally oppressed any anything that didn't agree with their views. That makes sense. That's why I say that it was an accidental far left information weapon. So, uh, is it th- if it, because it's, it's like Silicon Valley a- attracts the smartest engineers, the smartest sort of technologists and programmers from yep. around the world. Um, they created an information weapon that yep. was then harnessed by the far left, who could not themselves create the weapon, but happened to be co-located where the technologists were. Mm. And happened to be aligned politically with the people that possessed it. The technologists uh, generally are moderate, maybe moderate left, 
they're they're not they're 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 not far left. That's why I say San Francisco, Berkeley. It's, it's, it doesn't even extend to South San Francisco or even to Palo Alto. So, so SF Berkeley is the most far left, um, perhaps you know, co- in a competition with Portland. But I'd say SF Berkeley is more far left even than Portland. Mm. But like uh, literally in America, it's we're talking about an area that's maybe a ten mile radius. And so the, the normally the the effects, the negative effects of a far left ideology that is w- would be geographically limited to a t- ten mile radius. That's like not it's small like the, so so any any bad effects of that ideology would be geographically constrained under normal circumstances and have been in the past. But when you have uh, basically a technolo- a technological megaphone, which w- which was Twitter and, and social media in general, suddenly the the far left are handed a megaphone to earth. I'm going to pause this for a second. Uh, if, for, if you're wondering why I'm not really saying anything, um, it's because I'm also, I want to listen to this. A um, little bit of life, life tip, life advice. Uh, you have two ears and one mouth. Whenever it comes to me trying to learn something to gain information, I try to be quiet and just listen as much as I can and try to just absorb everything. That's why I'm sitting here so quiet and not really comment commenting on anything. It's because I just want to listen, and whenever I say something, that's when I want to say it. So uh, just want to throw that out there. A, a, a te- a, a, an incredibly powerful technology weapon that they themselves could not create, but they happen to be co-located with the technologists who created it by accident. It's kind of like the proximity. I don't want to call it the proximity principle. That is. I think some people understand. Um, how you become people, a product of your environment is kind of like what it's um, like. That's so, how I'm I mean, interpreting from the it. Of, of the, from some people who used to be at Twitter, uh, the people were like, well, it's a, a big shift to the right. That is correct. It is a shift to the right because everything is to the right if you're far left. Everything mm-hmm. is to the right. But it's but how many far left people have actually been suspended or, or banned from from Twitter now X, zero. So it's really just moved to the center, but from the perspective of the far left, it's right. It's, it's moved to the right. It's like everything's relative. The that makes sense. L- the that makes the sense. Difference in it, moderation. Uh, sorry, I should say it's pro- it propagated that far left philosophy not just to America, but to everywhere on Earth. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And with the same level of suppression in other countries as well. Yes. But the Taliban is on Twitter, right? <laughs> like I, w- I always think of like, "Hey, Mr. Taliban, telling me bananas." <laughs> 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 hey, Mr. Taliban. I mean, there, but there's definitely some p- people on um, Twitter that are daylight cold man and one of them. Yeah. Um, y- yeah. So th- the p- the point I- the point is, um, I uh, that I from my standpoint, uh, that is that. X, FK, Twitter, um, should uh, represent the sort of collective consciousness of humanity. So it, now that that means that there are going to be views on there that you don't like um, mm-hmm. or disagree with. Um, but that's humanity. Yep. So are you going to exclude them or or not? Now, I mean, if if somebody you know breaks the law. Then, then they the account is suspended. I mean, if they uh, av- actively advocate murder, then the account is suspended. We we do have what we call like the kind of United Nations exclusion rule, which is that you can have, say, the Ayatollah, <laughs> the, it, who, you know, uh, would would prefer that Israel didn't exist, for example. Um, and um, but he's allowed to go to the UN building in New York. Mm. Um, and uh, in fact, generally officials from Iran uh, do in fact go to the UN building in New York, um, even though they are a heavily sanctioned country. So, so I think that there's there's merit to having, uh, just like there's merit, there's some merit to the UN. One can disagree with the UN, and I think one sh- we shouldn't have a world government that we bow down to. But uh, in fact, that's risky for civilization. But I think you do want to have the leaders of countries uh, represented um, on social media. That's fair. 
All right, guys, that's going to be it for this one. I thought that was pretty uh, interesting. Um, he didn't really explain why he bought it, though, which is what maybe it was just to move it to get to make Twitter or X more neutral, so to say. Maybe that's what he was doing. It was more of like a political move, but that's how I understood it. Uh, but anyways, guys, thanks for watching. Comment, subscribe. See you on the next one.